Welcome to Faith on Film with Isaac Hernandez and Holly McClure. Keeping you informed on faith and family entertainment. Holly, do you like musicals? I don't mean like musical films, but actually on stage, theater musicals. I do. I do. I love I love the traditional ones that I saw, I think, growing up as a kid. Fiddler on the Roof in Oklahoma. Uh-huh. And those greats. I love those. Yeah, one of my favorites is uh, Music Man. Which, yes, uh, Music Man. I just, I just love the music that they have in it. It's it's very intricate music. Uh, and of course, second to that would be Newsies. I don't know if you've seen Newsies, but man, that is a wonderful musical. Yes. Well, anyway, today, uh, recently I saw a musical that uh, was starring Shonda Pierce and uh, uh, John Schneider. Uh, and so I, I looked at it and I'm like, hey, this is this is pretty good. Actually, I didn't even realize John Schneider had, uh, you know, it, it was good at stage stage uh, acting. Theatrical, theatrical. He, yeah. he was quite he was quite good. Uh, and in fact, now we will have the writer. Oh, I should say the playwright because it's not a screenwriter; it's a playwright of a, yeah. of a musical. Um, and uh, she's she's actually not just a playwright of musicals; she's got an incredible career. Yeah, I would say she. It's it's so impressive that that's it like is. one of a dozen a dozen things that I mean she's got an amazing <laughs> career. I, yeah, I, I agree. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's take a look at the trailer first, uh, and then we'll okay. come back. We'll come back to her. Okay. Welcome to Hickory Hollow. We Amish lead a simple life, and we like it that way. Our songs speak of love and of truth. So then I'm adopted. I do have my Catherine somewhere out there. We'll find her. I'm interested in hiring someone from your agency to play a young Amish girl. Excuse me. The Amish girl? In the flesh. Fair enough. My whole world has changed. Everything I thought to be true isn't. Hello, Mother. (laughs) And aren't we all looking for forgiveness we don't deserve? In Mayfield, sir. Good job. Uh, Martha, what welcome. What was the name of the musical? <laughs> it is called The Confession. Yes. The Confession. Martha, so from what I understand, you are an award winning author, playwright, television writer, and was the first woman staff writer for comedian. Bob Hope. That's what we meant by, wow, she's got quite a career. Uh, You're a prolific playwright for Blue Gate musicals with 13 original family-friendly Broadway-style musics playing in Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Florida. You know what? We want to hear all about your career. (laughs) Well, first of all, I want to say, Martha, I love seeing that trailer and seeing, I mean, that probably to me, seeing Shonda Pierce in that role, I would never have thought her doing that role and John Schneider. So, I mean, what an amazing talent that you got that I want to see it. Like, you know, makes you want to see it. Just those two stars. And, and they did have a lot of experience in theater. So it it was uh, fun for them to do and fun for us to have them in it because they, uh, they both play the comic relief of the show and, uh, for uh, John Schneider, he he plays the villain, but we have a lot of laughs at his expense. And then Shonda uh, is the best friend of one of the other characters that uh, we are endeared to throughout the musical. So she has a lot of uh, give and take with with Shonda's husband, and as far as uh, putting you know putting him down a bit and putting him in his place and. So it's a lot of fun, and uh, there's definitely some serious moments, some very high drama as far as the situation uh, that is going on. And uh, but there's a lot of laughs, and uh, has a good message throughout it that I think the audiences will, when they leave, they're going to leave with a lot of hope in whatever's going on in their own life. They can apply uh, what the characters learned uh, in their own life, take it home with them, and and humming the songs and uh, laughing over some of the things that happened. Yeah. Well, I, I'm curious, was it an original screenplay or did you um, cr- create the whole thing or was it based on a book or something? It was based on a trilogy of Beverly Lewis's uh, that uh, we took the the three books and I went through it and looked for places because you can't put all three books on the stage, obviously. So 
I looked for places that were pertinent to what we were going to see, uh, how we were going to tell the story, and and then added uh, some comic relief through those two characters and a few others. Mary uh, is a character that has a lot of has a lot of fun as well, and and just wanted to tell this story, which uh, it has a it has a very um, universal theme but then also a specific one as far as adoption but but mm -hmm. any parent can, can feel what they are feeling in, in in like i said any situation that you're going through it's those tough times in life that make a good story music to me is very important that's why i say i love musicals and the, what i love about musicals is their music so if the music is not that great i don't like the musical as much this one had really good music Oh, right, right. We have uh, some uh, amazing talent in that department as mm -hmm. far as uh, uh, our, our producer, starting with him. He's a Grammy-nominated uh, uh, you know, producer, songwriter, and, and then we also have our songwriter, Wally Nason, and uh, he's very talented. And there's just, like I said, you'll go home humming the tunes if... Uh, I, I can't because I can't hit a note, but <laughs> uh, they're, they're really uh, powerful songs and fun songs. There's some fun songs in there as well. I'll tell you what you can hit is you can hit humor. I mean, we heard you wrote for Bob Hope. You've written for some of the greats. And it's hard to believe that, you know, at that time, I mean, were women writers at the time that you wrote for Bob Hope and these others, were you like a novelty in the industry or were there a lot of women writers? Because we never hear about the women writers in those days, only the men. <laughs> well, I wasn't in the beginning, beginning, you know, when uh, in the 50s and 60s and those those times. But the, but the years that I did come on, they uh, we were rare. It, it, we were getting through the door, but but it wasn't that common. So um, I was it, it was a new territory, but I had. I had been writing in church and doing this type of writing already and had been had a, a newspaper column. And uh, so I was putting my comedy out there wherever I could. And and I had also started in drama. So uh, as I as I kept going, I started blending the two uh, with the musicals and, and with other plays and whatnot. And. Uh, things that I've written, I would blend not only the comedy, but but some serious uh, topics. I, I enjoy um, sharing those mm -hmm. those parts of my heart that I like to uh, uh, talk about and and put up there and see where we can go with the story. So now, how did you I end like up getting people. hired by Bob Hope? <laughs> Yeah, well, that, that was uh, that was pretty cool. It it happened after a disappointment. I got real close to uh, selling a script to Mama's family. I had met the writer, uh, the uh, one of the writers for the Carol Burnett show, and then he was also a creative consultant for Mama's family, and he liked my work and challenged me to write a spec script, which I did, and then. Um, I actually wrote two spec scripts. I didn't have a typewriter that was working at the time. So for a quarter, for 20 minutes, I went down to the local library and just kept feeding it all, <laughs> all these quarters and ended up typing two spec scripts. And that's what opened the door for me in that direction. And so they were going to call me in uh, the next season. I talked to the producer and he um, you know, said he wanted to call me in and pitch some show ideas. And then what happens in Hollywood, uh, as we all know, the, sometimes the show doesn't get picked up. And that one didn't get picked up at that time. It later did, but at that time. And so I was disappointed. I'd gotten so close and my dreams came crashing down. But uh, then he said, uh, Gene, the parrot, the, the uh, gentleman I'm talking about, he said, would you like to write for Bob Hope? And I could not believe it. I I had been writing for some other comedians, and and so he was like, you know, they they all I've enjoyed writing for him, uh, but uh, at that time he would have been he's the top. He, he, okay, I have a question. Do you have a favorite joke that you that that was one of your favorites that you wrote for Bob Hope that he told? 
Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's probably a lot. I mean, is there, you know, do, you see these, these, do you see these notebooks? <laughs> thousands, thousands of jokes. So, oh, well, I mean, he was just so funny. Who didn't love watching Bob Hope? And you mentioned oh, yeah. Carol Burnett. I just saw that there ha they had a 90th celebration of her 90 years in career for Carol Burnett. And, and I interviewed her years ago. She is a precious woman. Oh, my gosh. She's a sweetheart. But funny. So, I mean, you've really worked among some of the great i have and on and, and i feel so blessed to have done that because he ran in such a great crowd that just about anybody that was anybody came on the show mm -hmm. so you were backstage with these people you were writing lines that they'd go on stage and say to bob and bob would say back to them i mean it was just unbelievable some of the people not only the legends but the people uh, that were you know, hot for the day, the, the, the mega, you know, the mega stars of the day. Like Lucille Ball. He always was oh, doing yeah. things with Lucille Ball, I know, and well, others. She was on the show. And in fact, when we had, when we had a line change that we had to do, uh, we would take the line into his dressing room and he'd be there in the chair getting his makeup done for the, you know, to go on stage. And there in the room with him would be Lucy or, Milton Berle, Danny Thomas, oh George Burns, you name it. Wow. They'd be sitting there waiting for the line that you're going to give them. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah, it, it was incredible. I'm, I'm in the of writing my memoirs right now, so I'm, oh. I'm so excited oh, yeah. to be telling these stories. A lot of pressure, too. You know, it's funny because oh, yeah. when I watch when I watch the St. Jude's commercials on TV, and they always talk about St. Jude, and I realize people have no idea that Danny Thomas started that, and they don't even know who Danny Thomas oh. is. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of sad that those greats from those days aren't remembered more today, because, I mean, I remember growing up watching all of them, and oh, that was classic. Classic comedy and classic humor at that time. It really was. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and we've got to, our generation ha has to do everything we can to keep keep that out there so that they do realize who these people were. And um, that, like the, la the last book I just wrote uh, with uh, Bob's daughter, Linda, and we told his World War II, uh, the story of his how he became so beloved by the GIs and how mm -hmm. why he loved them so much. And it's their own letters back and forth. And uh, it's power. It's just those letters. Yeah. The story of him with the GIs is so powerful. Now, there's oh, another man. legend that I know you worked for and wrote for. Um, and she had something very interesting to say about you. Let's take a look. Well, you see, uh, you're no better than your writers. <laughs> Bob Hope will tell you that. He had eight. I had one, Martha Bolt. <laughs> and she uh, writes her tail off. This woman never stops writing. She's got an endless inkwell of funniness, funny stories, and she, she puts out books when she isn't writing for a person. She's writing a funny book, book after book after book. Just flows out of her. That's a good writer. Wow. <laughs> Phyllis Diller. Oh, I can't believe it. What a compliment. Yeah. Oh, she was so good at compliments. Oh, the the notes that I had, the personalized notes that I have from her that I, I'm putting in the memoirs. But she was so good at that, at just just giving you an encouraging word all the time, just constantly. She was a wonderful, wonderful person. You know, in a day and age of wokeism and how they're um, attacking comedy and really removing anything funny almost anymore because it's, you know, going to be uh, canceled or whatever. You know, it's kind of I wish we could. I'm glad you're talking about reviving and having us remember the comedy of those days because they talked about it just life. It was funny. They didn't have to yes. cut anyone down except for Don Rickles, but he was always funny. Was but I mean, it was just simple things about themselves, but it was funny. I wish that we could remember those comics more and kind of go back to that kind of comedy because, you know, no matter what the works say, we it was hilarious. And that's what people grew up loving and watching on TV and appreciating yeah. and all those comics. Yes, Absolutely. There, there and were no and what was the thing? No, no. And and one of the things that they did is when they would talk about, uh, say, uh, you know, they're doing a roast, a comedy roast, the you know Dean Martin roast or whatever. They would sure they would they would say jokes, but it came from a place of high respect and love. Yes. 
And it always, the roast always ended by them sharing how much they respected this person. And today, it's like there's no, uh, sometimes there's no connection with the person that's talking to the person they're quote unquote honoring. There's there's just not that, it doesn't come across that way at least. No. That they really love and honor them. No. Uh, so I, I don't know that. I, there's a little, and, it's, it, there's, and it's vulgar too. There's vulgarity, and you right. know, just and it's it's almost the shock thing. It's a shock thing, you right? know. If they can shock them, then they get a they get a nervous laugh, and that's okay for them. They they think that's the bar is to get a nervous laugh, and then you've got your laugh. And and the the legends they got a laugh, a real laugh, a belly laugh. They'd yes. have people falling over laughing. And yes. it was just, it, it felt good. It felt good. So, you know, also, um, you said you worked with, um, I know, Phyllis, Silver and, and Phyllis Diller and Bob Hope. But um, who was another one that was very famous? I'll let you tell about it, that you worked with. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Joan Rivers. Yes. 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 Oh, yes. yes. She, she did a lot of the same kind of humor that Phyllis did as far as housekeeping and aging. And I was in my 20s when I uh probably 27, 28 when I was writing for them. So I had to pretend, you know, to write the aging jokes. I don't have to pretend anymore, but at the, <laughs> I had to pretend what that, what that would have felt like. But um, yeah, it, it was, it, it was just fun. And she would, when she would buy a joke, uh, it would come in the mailbox and it would be in a pink envelope with your contract and the and you know you had to write sign the contract and then she'd mail the check but it was this pink envelope so in the mail whatever it was junk mail bills whatever that pink envelope you knew it was Joan Rivers and it was it was just so cool <laughs> and Phyllis had cool envelopes as well so uh, you just she would always have little stamps on it like um Phyllis Diller is a concert pianist. And, and it, yeah. <laughs> I just, Did you save those? I didn't even oh, think about that. I saved everything. Oh, I saved I everything. Too. Yes. I it, it's all going in the book because I'm I just I'm so thrilled to be able to tell all this about them because they're just such wonderful people and mm. and groundbreaking in so much of a, of history. Of What's what, the name of the book that you're writing? What is the name of the book and when will it come out? Well, I I I um, am going back and forth with titles right now, so I'm not totally totally positive on what the name's going to be yet. But I'm I'm hoping it. it I'm I'm almost done. I, I'm gonna ha- I'm at the editing stage where I'm having to pull things back, but I've got like 450 pages. Wow! <laughs> so I, I obviously that's too much, but I have to start being selective. But uh, man, I'm having fun, having a lot of fun. Wow. But wow! I understand you. You've written about eighty-eight books. Um, I don't yes. know. What, what are you doing? In your spare second? Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, was it? How difficult was it for you to go from writing a book to adapting? Was there a learning curve to that? Well, uh, it. We that's kind of what we did a lot with. Uh, on the Hope Show, we would sometimes do what we would call book shows, and it would be uh, about, you know, some big topic, and we'd do the whole hour would be a takeoff on that. So I, w- I was used to going through things and, and picking out what would look good up on stage or what we needed to tell. Uh, so that helped a lot. But uh, the difference is where I'm writing for one voice and, and two or three or four that's in a sketch, uh, you're, now you're writing for like nine characters or 10 characters. And sometimes the actor plays two or three characters. So you're writing for all these characters. And then when you're, when you're working on it, sometimes you're working on the next one that's coming down the pike. So you've got all of those characters. So you have, you know, 20, 30 characters and and their voices that you have to keep track of and and know that okay this sounds like that person and and uh, that sounds like that person so that's a that's a little bit of the difference um but it, 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 it's still it's all writing and it's it's all making uh 
<clears throat> the words, I love to play with words. I, in fact, I, I had a, a Phyllis Diller said a great, a great line once that when, when she and Bob would get together, she said it was like two little kids playing in a sandbox of words. Isn't oh, that, wow. Isn't that a great quote? Yes, yes. That, that so, is a great quote. Yeah. And that's what I feel like is is that I'm just, you're just playing with words and putting them together, putting them in a, you know, maybe, especially in a joke, if you get one too many words or, it, then, you know, then you throw the rhythm off. Of yes. It. Yes. If, you, if you're not clear and you don't have enough words, then you the clarity is affected. So it's a balance. You, you need you need the balance. And sometimes that's, you know, a lot of times a comedian will rewrite the joke after they come home. You know, well, what's wrong? Why isn't it playing? And, and a lot of times it's just two or three words are the problem or not enough words. So you just play around with it. And um, in writing for each of them and then uh, also in writing for Hope, because he had such a volume of material, we wrote so many jokes and you really got it. It was a great training training ground because you had to write fast. You know, he'd be getting ready to walk on stage and you'd get a call that something was going on in that town. Give me some jokes on this. And he's you've got two seconds to be <laughs> on stage. Oh, my gosh. I can't imagine that pressure. I, I really that kind of pressure to be quick, especially if your mind is, you know, not alert or sharp and you're kind of fuzzy and you're trying to think of stuff. I can't, I can't imagine that pressure. You oh, know, I, I, want to, I want to ask you a couple of questions. These are quick answers if you can, or, you know, just kind of a, ask you a few questions. Okay. For your books that you've written, what is one of your favorite family or kid friendly books that you would suggest for parents for teens or for family? Uh, well, for family, uh, uh, well, well, okay. <laughs> or one or two <laughs> topics. The devotionals for family. The, the uh, teenagers tell me they really love them. They're, uh, one of the titles is Never Ask Delilah for a Trim. So that's, uh, I have this whole series, <laughs> whole series of devotionals for kids. For for uh, uh, older teenagers, uh, Josiah for President it would be my my favorite. My first novel, but, but I really, uh, really love that. It just poured out of me. It was one of those books that you just sit down and just write. Josiah for president. Okay, and for adults, or for women, or for men, if they want a humorous book, what would one of your books be for them? Oh, didn't my skin used to fit? That was- <laughs> <laughs> I'm writing these down because I'm going to look them up. Didn't my skin used to fit? Yeah. Oh. Oh, I love these. I love those. And, and people can find these where do you have a website or where where can they get well, them Amazon or yeah any any yeah Amazon they're they're all, all on Amazon or if you just put down my name it'll come up and and there's a bunch of them listed and on, on the author's page of Amazon but any book you could probably get um, someone to order it it it's it, they're all out there I I keep finding old ones that I've written years ago and I go oh that's still around you know so. Hmm. You know, um, oh, I, I recently asked uh, an actor, director, producer, I, oh no, writer, that's it, writer, actor, uh, director, and I said, well, what do you like doing best, acting or writing or uh, directing? And his answer was, that's like asking me which one of my kids I love the most. <laughs> so I'm glad you were able to answer that for Holly today. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, sometimes, I mean, you've done so much, yeah. you know, but some of them are more favorites than others. Or you can think, well, this is more kid friendly or for books and things as far as that goes. And then the musical, I mean, you know, that's going to be something that a lot of people can see. And, and it says Amish. So I think that's even more funny that, you know, it has, <laughs> yeah. you have a play on that with Shonda Pierce and a John Schneider. Um, did funny. you get to meet John and Shonda? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. absolutely. Well, I've known Shonda for years and I've done some writing for her. And mm-hmm. have you? Oh, she's funny. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, working with John, he oh, is, I've, I've interviewed him before and, and done so, And in fact, it was on set on a film that he did. He is so sweet and so charming and such a nice man. Yeah. You know, what was your experience with him? Absolutely that. It, and, and it was, 
he has a great sense of humor The what he put into this role was exactly what I pictured. He did a phenomenal job and uh, is very talented musically and and dancing and everything. He just was he pulled it off and he was great. Yes, I, I one of the what I think one of the when I really just became more of a fan of his was when he was on Dancing with the Stars because he actually mm. he was not the best of the dancers, but he was actually really good. <laughs> right, right. And, and and Shonda was great, too. And especially for the ones who saw it live, some of the some of the um, outtakes are just hilarious as far as, you yeah. know, when the a mistake was made or something and just the ad libs. So it, we just had a great time filming it. And we're so excited that great. not only are, are, you know, is everybody going to see it, be able to see it now uh, and know what we've been doing, but um, it's just, it's, they're going to feel like they, they're there at, at the, uh, great. at the musical. It, it has that feel like you're there in the audience. Great. So okay, how the name people... of the musical. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's uh the confession. The name of the musical is the, the confession. confession musical. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. And but where can people get a hold of or see that? Uh, well, it's it should be it's coming out on up TV and then uh, and then later on I'm, I'm sure it'll be uh, exactly yeah. And how so, can people fo- how can people follow you? Uh, well, they can go to marthabolton.com. There you go. Or uh, I have a Facebook page as well, uh, Martha Bolton official. And then they also have um, they can any information on it. Go to confession confession musical movie dot com, and it's got all the information that they need, and and it's uh, updated regularly as far as where they can be seeing this. Terrific, Martha. Just a real quick question: Are you writing for anyone today? Are you writing any jokes or comedy for any com- comedian today? <laughs> well, I'm I'm. I still get calls from different ones every one, you know, once in a while. Um, as far as some of the ones that are, you know, they need something for a particular topic, and and so I'll I'll uh, I, okay. I do that kind of thing on the side. But I'm in the middle of writing three books besides uh, writing my memoirs and then two other books, and then the musicals. And um, I'm just I'm, I stay busy. I I get up. Really early in the morning, about three o'clock usually, and Ooh. start right, start my day writing. And oh my gosh! <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> but I love it. I love what well, I do. I, yeah. it's, oh man! Well, thank you for being with us today. We didn't make you get up at three in the morning for this uh, because I wasn't going to get up at three in the morning. But uh, I do appreciate you taking time to come on with us. All right. I'm Andrew Walkington, and I'm from the United Kingdom, and I am a filmmaker, uh, the uh, managing director and founder of the Cooperative British Youth Film Academy, former head of television production at United Christian Broadcasters, and a passionate Christian filmmaker. And you are watching Faith on Film. Holly, that's it for today. That's it for today. Have a good one. See you next week. Write to us at faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. That's faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at faithonfilmtv. Also, go to our YouTube channel, Faith on Film TV, and hit the subscribe button and the bell for notifications on our latest Faith on Film shows.